Good morning, dear friends. Shall we start the program? Yes, sir. Dear present, good afternoon to all the dignitaries who are presented here. The new day begins with our always sunrise light and even always begins with the prayer song. Prayer is the key for referencing us. So now I would like to call Dr. Nanu Saranya, guest faculty, Department of Lifelong Learning and Extension, GRI, for your prayer song. Shanti, 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 oh. Yamuk vindu marangale, Yise penke ilai karnapati, Manadil saranam yalla, Madayil yehule thomraman, Nilai kumuladha nilmona, Nilai vandhita nisai yedveni, Welcome to all. Now we are gathered here for having international webinar on role of stakeholders in community engagement and development experiences of ethiopia the best way to find out yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others so since we have a webinar for six months we are uh, uh, now arranging the international webinar so i have a professor uh, we have a professor raja dean school of health sciences and rural development gandhigram rural institute and the president indian adult education association new delhi and may I request Professor Raja to deliver the welcome address on this occasion. Am I audible to you? Good afternoon to all of you. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, you are audible, Raja. Yes, yes, you are yes. Audible. So, good afternoon to all of you. And I am, I am welcoming all of you at this very afternoon hour. Many would be having their nap and having their lunch. But at the same time, this part of the country, we have started this program at exactly. So thanks to Nyana Sarania and Dr. Ramesh for having given me this opportunity. And today, we have been conducting a lot of um, webinars, but today is something special. Uh, international webinar, we would like to uh, start, and today uh, we started this. And the topic of this seminar, or the webinar today, is the role of multi-stakeholders in community engagement and development experience of Ethiopia. We all knew that, you know, Ethiopia is a country where uh, 
a lot of changes and development has been taking place and uh, many of our friends and our own students from Gandhigram University had gone there and uh, they have developed a very good infrastructure and also they are very popular among the students in Ethiopia and they have been in this uh, you know spearheading uh, in many educational institutions and such one of the institutions uh, we have a very good tie up at the Hausa University 5 it is in uh, Ethiopia Hausa they had gone into the MOU signed between the uh, great institutions, Gandhigram Rural University, as well as the, you know, uh, Havasa University. And the vice chancellors of the same university had come to Gandhigram and spent a very good, valuable time in Gandhigram. And he was so happy and said that this is one of the very, very important university at the, uh, you know, uh, rural development and the grassroots level. So he made a very good comment that this is the only university in the country really at the rural background and rural area serving the really needy people. So that was this comment. And with this, um, I just, uh, you know, would like to go on to my, um, you know, duty. And today's the webinar and one of our uh, uh, you know, alumni as, a, as well as the very distinguished personality, Associate Professor Dr. Yes Sivakumar. And I really appreciate him that he has accepted our invitations and going to deliver the very popular webinar, an international um, webinar uh, series. And the first person who has uh, taken up the responsibility to spend his valuable time with us. And I really, on behalf of the Gandhi Grammar Rural University, and on my own behalf, I wholeheartedly welcome uh, Dr. S. Sivakumar. Um, he is the School of Governance and Development Studies and Governance at uh, Hawassa University, uh, Ethiopia. And you know, I'm not going to say more about him because uh, Dr. Vendatravi would be able to introduce him before. Uh, he uh, gives his um, speech and you know I also welcome our uh, own uh, colleague and professor and head of the Department of Cooperation Gandhigram University Dr. C. Pichai is one of the very dynamic person and who has been working very hard establishing a academia as well as the outreach activities uh, both in terms of uh, uh, grassroots level at the national level he is also a nodal officer for the uh, national level monitoring and he is doing his work very well and on behalf of uh, the Indian Adult Education Association and on my own behalf I welcome you sir at this uh, juncture to preside over this uh, uh, webinar and I also welcome uh, Mrs. Kalpana Kausik is the direct is the director of the indian adult education association wherein i am uh, the president for the indian adult education association and she is uh, going to propose a, a word of thanks and i also welcome her on behalf of the gandhi Gram rural university and on my own behalf and the participants on behalf of the participants and mr after yes rami is he is uh, you know uh, having the mastering the master of ceremony and Dr. Jnana Sardinia, she did a very beautiful prayer. So this is about the, uh, you know, welcoming the guest as well as welcoming the uh, guest speaker and uh, all other dignitaries. I also welcome our own uh, friends uh, from various universities at the national level, at the international level. And they're all on the, you know, screen I could see uh, Dr. Uma, uh, you know, Uma Devi from the Andhra Pradesh and um, uh, Karnagaran Ramasamy again from Ethiopia and our own uh, mentor, uh, Indian Adult Education Association, uh, Sri Kailas Chautriji and um, Prasotman, Engineer Prasotman. And I can go on name very, very good people 
uh, those who are all joined at this hour and i'm really happy that there are research scholars and distinguished the professors and uh, other participants they have joined for this uh, webinar today and i'm also uh, you know take um, the responsibility of welcoming our uh, uh, dr um, uh, T.T. Ranganathan sir, Vice Chancellor in charge, and also Dr. M.G. Sedhu Raman sir, Registrar in charge, um, who are all part of this uh, international uh, webinar. And I also would like to say a few words about why this topic has been taken and chosen for this today's uh, lecture. Because uh, multi-stakeholders in community engagement and development is one of the very important area not only in academia, but for all the development um, arena, this is more important. And why, why this community engagement is very important? Because this is a process of developing a relationship that enables stakeholders to work together and gain access to the process for assessing, analyzing, planning, leading, implementing, monitoring, and evaluation action. So all these six steps, which are very, very important in order to have the stakeholders and community engagement. And this has been stated by the World Health Organization 2020. And the community engagement, there are nine principles and which are very, very important and unique. One has to definitely has to have this in order to have the community engagement. And this one is uh, uh, the defined purpose, goals, and the strength of the population. And know the community, how the community is being emerged and how the community is participating and how the community feels to engage itself. And it is also necessary to go to the community to make them to understand this one and look for collective self determinations for action. And succeeding in the engagement process, there are few items which are very important and essential. Community partnerships are very critical and we have to respect the community and the diversity of the culture and the nature. Mobilize community assets and develop the capacities for them to develop and maintain flexibility while we talk about the multi-stakeholders for the community engagement and community to collaborate wherever it is possible, collaborate with other organizations, collaborate with other agencies, collaborate with academic and industry, and wherever it is possible, we have to collaborate and to make things more effective. And also when we talk about the community engagement, and there are basic characters, and there are standards, minimum standards to be practiced and practiced and followed. And there are seven steps, which is very, very unique in nature to discuss and to know about this multi-stakeholders for community engagement. As I said earlier, that planning, understanding the stakeholders' point of view, preparing internally to engage how to accommodate, how to communicate, how to bring together for organizational structures, and building the trust that is more important. You know, when when there are more than one, when we talk about the multi-stakeholders, building trust is very important. How I trust my own organizations, how I trust the, the other persons 
who are willing to come and take part with us and have to have consultations quite often in order to make things to go forward and get it succeed and respond to implement and respond to the uh, uh, proposal which we bring and to have the proper understanding lastly monitoring not only monitoring and evaluation and evaluating but one has to have the documentations properly often we found that in any organizations for that matter for any organizations people they talk they can be in meeting implement execute but at the end of the result is documentations becomes the problem so documentation is also very important in order to achieve the goals and also to get back how much we were able to achieve how much we are progressing ourselves for the uh, you know the uh, vision and mission which we had already framed so multi stakeholders in community engagement is a very uh, you know uh, uh, approachable and understandable area so that in any organizations or any development the multi stakeholders for community development for enterprising the engagement of the people which are very important with this i uh, i am really happy and once again i welcome all the participants and distinguished uh, guests and uh, distinguished persons and personalities who have come again in this uh, uh, platform uh, we, we used to conduct earlier but now for the few months we stopped but now again we started gained the confidence and today for this international webinar and you all joined i am really happy to see my own you know a friend and and my own uh, i won't say my student but he has become my colleague now shokumar and you are looking at from ethiopia and please uh, give a valuable uh, you know lecture today and we are all here to listen to you properly and i wish you all the best shokumar over to the thank you sir thank uh, you so much master of ceremony person dr s ramasa uh, ramesh to take over it thank you very much again once again for all of you having joined us and let this journey will continue thank you very much thank you thank you professor rajan for warm welcome as as patna gandhi the quoted that that in a gentle way you can say the word now we have a versatile personality dr c pichai with us he is the professor and head department of cooperation gandhikram rural institute and a well known force in the field of cooperation management community engagement and development and its related field it's our pleasure and the privilege to have your presence on this occasion and to have your thought on in this important occasion may i request dr c pichai to deliver the presidential address uh, thank you so much uh, respected uh, professor dr raja anna dr venkatravi dr jnana saranya dr ramesh and also the guest speaker dr shiv kumar from ethiopia and all the participants good afternoon uh, really uh, i have to say kudos to the professor raja team because continuously they are conducting uh, webinar on different aspects that is not on uh, the programs are not for one day they used to have it for a week so continuously this effort is taken by professor raja dr vengatrivi and his team and my sincere thanks and also kudos to the team for their effort Uh, and really i am thankful for giving me an opportunity uh, to uh, say few words before uh, the webinar before dr shokmar takes the stage uh, in fact uh, nobody else could uh, explain the multi stakeholders role in community engagement than what what professor anna has told 
because he has i thought of explaining but already anna has given uh, a proper explanation and also a clear explanation on the stakeholders and also the community engagement so my role is uh, minimized and what i could do is that i can uh, share the experiences from the cooperatives how this multi stakeholders and community engagement has happened in india and little bit experience i have also in ethiopia i was there for 2 years so what are the experiences i had in ethiopia i, I thought i can share before i hand over the session to dr sivakumar so there are two revolutions that has happened in india one is green revolution and another one is uh, white revolution so all this green revolution and white revolution green revolution made us self sufficient in the food production white revolution made us uh, yeah self sufficient in the milk production also we were depending totally foreign countries for this in fact we are uh, lending our bowl for uh, getting or begging uh, foreign countries for these two aspects so these two revolutions changed the scenario totally one is green revolution so what cooperatives have done what the community engagement has happened and how the multi stakeholders uh, involvement was there in the green revolution is cooperative played an important role so when uh, the government thought that dr m swaminathan and also our uh, uh, minister uh, c subramanian maya both of them when they conceived the idea they have to have a i mean uh, an media or an institution to take this to the people so one of the institutions they have selected is cooperatives particularly the cooperatives which are located in the rural areas played an important role and what are the Uh, ideas put forth by the government through the through professor m swaminathan and also dr c s uh, c subramanian that was taken effectively to the rural people so one is hybrid varieties I mean, lot of hybrid varieties were introduced and it is it was rooted through cooperatives fertilizers pesticides were in, i mean used much and that was taken to the people and how effectively they can cultivate the agricultural uh, produces and that was also taken to the villages through cooperatives so how this uh, cooperatives played an important role is that so all those government schemes were were first came to or uh, all these schemes came to cooperatives and from cooperatives they just made the people to learn what is this hybrid seeds why they have to switch over from the traditional seed to the high yielding variety seeds and how fertilizers can be applied how the pesticides can be applied how they can increase the productivity of agricultural uh, commodities so these were the things which were taken effectively to the farmers farmers they are the members of the cooperatives and whenever they are in need of it one is credit they have to provide second input services should also be provided so these two aspects were taken very effectively and taken to the rural people rural masses they were unaware of what is this hybrid varieties what is this input services input fertilizer or pesticides and this was inculcated by the cooperative extension officials to the farmers and we made a tremendous change and when they are carrying out this activity they have not done it on their own they have other stakeholders also cooperative department was there agricultural department was also there animal husbandry department was also there government extension activity vos and other aspect, other people were there so by involving almost all those things and farmer organizations were also there so involving all the stakeholders now we could able to achieve the green revolution we speak about green revolution for a long time this is one aspect which uh, the uh, cooperatives have done second one is white revolution so we were depending totally on the imports of milk powders from usa probably we may knowing that a bar a can a tin will come stating i mean uh, mentioning us aid it is nothing but a powder which have been donated milk powder donated by us as an aid to india so malnutrition was there one of the reason is poor milk production so this totally changed cooperatives involvement dr kurian vargius kurian who is said to be the father of white revolution so after his involvement Uh, after he brought a sea change in the dairy sector we now become self sufficient and now we are number one milk product producer in the world india stands number one in the milk production so how this could happen so high breed uh, animals were uh, introduced 
animal husbandry, I mean, artificial insemination were also given and how the cows or buffaloes have to be reared. So that type of extension activities with the help of veterinary officials, agricultural officials and government officials, the cooperative took this aspect to the farmers, particularly milk animal owners. And now we, we are in a position to export milk products to foreign countries. So now we are number one in uh, the milk production. This has happened. One of the main contributors is cooperatives. That cooperatives have taken the extension activity involving the stakeholders, multi-stakeholders and engaging the community effectively, we could able to achieve this. So in India, I just wanted to give these two examples. I was there in Ethiopia for two years and I was serving in Tigray region. Now uh, that is burning totally. It's under a total problem. That region is under problem. So Canada, Canadian uh, NGO, they gave a fund for water users association in Tigray region. So it was a project for one year. Uh, they just funded uh, uh, benevolently and we went to different areas of Tigray region. And thing is that nobody can own the water resource. It's that is why they created water users association and the stream or the river which flows it has to be shared by hundreds of villages. And from each village, the farmers have to use the water which is flowing in the stream or in the river. So how effectively this could be used? Because uh, they cannot go for uh, digging a well or they cannot go for uh, what is called uh, bore wells. And only thing is that they can pump water from the river and it has to be used. For that, the government created Water Users Association. It's also one form of a cooperative, but it is not cooperative form. So here, the people have to be enticed. They have to be told that what is this association means, Water Users Association, how effectively it can be shared. Because at the top of the, at the head of the stream, the water flow will be more. And they should not take away all the water. When uh, the water flows to the tail end of uh, tail end, the water flow will be very less, and they should also use the water for the agricultural production purposes. So, unless you you create an awareness among all the farmers from the head to tail, it's it will become futile. They cannot use the water effectively. So, in that case, the water users association played an important role. For that, one of the stakeholders funding agency was a Canadian NGO agency. So we took this uh, to the people for the entire uh, Tigray region and we just conducted training programs for the trainers training program. And we told them that this has to be taken effectively to the farmers, how effectively they can use or share the water from the stream and how they can increase the I mean, agricultural production. So this was the things. So when we did all those things, even though it is a fund from the Canadian agency, we have to involve farmers association, farmers, and also government missionary, and also agriculture, horticulture, water division, all those things was there. And above all, there is one federal agency, federal cooperative agency was also there. That is the apex institution for the cooperatives. Or we can say that is the spokesperson for the cooperatives for the entire country. So that institution was also in, involved in that. And we effectively conducted that. So the community engagement is more important. And how it could be achieved is that you have to involve the stakeholders. So stakeholders involvement is more if they are uh, effectively doing the activities, you could find success. That is why I just gave two examples from India and also Water Users Association from Ethiopia. And this we could uh, see through our own eyes that it has been implemented very effectively by engaging the community, local community, and also other stakeholders. And that's what I wanted to say. Now, I don't want to take much time. I leave it to Dr. Sivakumar to kind of, I mean, present his speech on the topic. I thank once again, Professor Raja Anna and also Dr. Venkat Ravi and his team. Thank you so much. Now. Thank you. I just wanted to thank uh, Professor Pichai for having given a very good uh, practical uh, exposures and about his uh, work in Ethiopia. So we have a lot of Ethiopian friends and uh, the Gandhigram University has uh, really uh, developed a very good uh, resource person to develop in Ethiopia. Also. Sure. So 
your um, diamonds and so on stakeholders uh, practical exposure was very good i'm really uh, grateful to you and this really made all of us to understand how the multi stakeholders uh, could succeed while involving the people's participation or engaging the people's thank you and now over to dr venkat ravi please uh, introduce uh, dr sivakumar before uh, dr sivakumar uh, is going to deliver his lecture thank you thank you, thank you very much vijay dr vijay thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, it's very interesting to uh, listen to uh, Professor Pichai, and we are eagerly waiting to listen to another stalwart, uh, uh, Professor Yes uh, Siva Kumar, and uh, uh, Professor Yes Siva Kumar uh, is from Hawaii University, Ethiopia, and he has been uh, uh, very actively involved in teaching, research, and extension. since 19 sorry 2008 onwards in that ethiopian university and is a he has in been involved uh, in many ethiopian universities as an examiner and also is a uh, uh, board of examiners in many of the indian universities and uh, he is also active in publishing uh, five books and also about uh, uh, more than three four dozens of articles in uh, various journals the very interesting is he is a, he has been nominated as a consultant to the international agencies in the uh, um, Czech republic and also ethiopia in uh, for for project monitoring and evaluation in many of these uh, uh, what do call uh, uh, countries and uh, on the academic side also uh, he is recently he has become an editor in chief for an ethiopian journal of governance and development so the very interesting is normally we used to say that indian idea indian ideas via western countries and now the the all experiments which we have done uh, uh, in uh, gandhian institutions like uh, gandhi gram rural institute being an alumnist they have experimented in other countries particularly in african countries developing countries and uh, they have gained lot of experience and which we would like to give it to uh, through our department we would like to make it as an on off campus learning process we would like to uh, take this benefit to the many learners across the country now we make an uh, bed and attempt to uh, make it at an international level and uh, we, are, we are very happy to introduce one of our alumni though professor uh, uh, professor siva kumar is from ethiopian university and he happens to be our uh, proud product of gandhigram tour institute and we are happy and we are uh, listening uh, we are listening to dr pichai with his experience and now we'll be having uh, what i call an uh, experience sharing with uh, uh, professor uh, siva kumar uh, now it is professor siva kumar to uh, take up on what is your experience with regard to the multi stakeholders participation in community outreach and engagement from india to ethiopia now and from ethiopia to again coming back to uh, uh, india so it is something like a flowing back and we are giving it to our own institution which we have taken from over to professor shiva kumar okay thank you sir uh, the most respected dean of the school of sciences and rural development respected my sandhi sena guru and my professor my philosopher my mentor professor l raja sir and the most respected professor and head department of cooperatives professor vijay sir and the master of ceremony is ramesh and the, the one who has uh, clearly you know mentioned about the spirit of nandigram in her uh, prayer song dr s nana saranya guest faculty the department of lifelong learning and extension gri and above all the organizer the key organizer of the webinar dr r venkat ravi and authorities i am very much delighted to be here on this occasion of course it is one of the red carpet day in my life as being a alumni of gandhi ground starting from my schooling after my schooling until my doctorate i have been there in gandhi ground for about 2 years 
So it's my major part of my, my life. I spent in Gandhigram and next to Gandhigram, I've been here another 14 years in uh, Ethiopia. So it is uh, really a red card for a day in my life to address the gathering about my own experience with regard to community engagement and in the role of multi stakeholders. So having said this, of course, today is one of the very important days for Africa, the whole Africa. Today is World Africa Day. I don't know, Professor Angel Ravi has chosen today it is because of Africa Day or it is by coincidence. I'm very much delighted to share this information for all the August gathering on this occasion because it is one of the very precious day in which Africa Union was formed in the capital of Addis Ababa, capital of Ethiopia, it is known as Addis Ababa. So it is really one of the very interesting day. I'm very delighted to be here. And having said this, about the topic, of course, as you know very well, as we have been seeing from India, as well as from Asia, we, we feel that Ethiopia is one of the very low profile country where people is to starve, hunger, starvation, poverty, and the like. Of course, this requires a lot of support. Development in Ethiopia is not as such what you know they have been aspiring to have. The change, transformations, the efforts, even what you call the one, the so-called four piece policies, programs, projects, and even what you call different type of packages, they have been trying, but still, still economy is growing on the other side. But on the one side, if you see the country is not getting the development as such it was in need of so having this backdrop i feel this i'm very much related to go over with my topic on the role of multi-stakeholders in community engagement and development uh, the experiences from ethiopia so with this let me try to share my you know slide i have already prepared my slide so please uh, for a minute am i audible sir is it clear the watch is clear or not I'm audible, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Okay, okay, madam. Thank you, thank you. So, when I come to the topic, it is all about multi-stakeholders. So, Professor Raja, in his welcome address, he has, you know, explicitly he talked about how the multi-stakeholders they play their role in engaging community, empowering community, enlightening community, and promoting the lifestyle and livelihood of the community. So the strategies, nuances, Professor has already clearly explained. In addition to that, Professor C. Pichai has also given us a live example. It's very quite fabulous examples about his own experience with regard to community engagement, in the context of India as well as Ethiopia. I'm very much delighted to have this really, you know, very, what do you call it, promising, you know, as well as it's wonderful, you know, I'd like to you know, acknowledge this in this regard. Again, my topic is about the role of multi stakeholders. Friends, uh, my presentation outline is going to be on these areas. One is about, yeah, one will be on. Higher education institutions and their role in community engagement. I'm not going to talk about it in detail, but I'd like to highlight some of the key aspects about higher learning institutions. And then uh, multi stakeholders in community engagement and how they are a crux for bringing development and uh, the experiences from Ethiopia, the past experiences and the, the future directives and what is going on currently. So this is not about my presentation outline. With this, uh, for those, I hope everybody knows about Ethiopia. On the left side of the slide, you can see the emblem. On the right side, you can see the flag of the nation. This is known as Ethiopia. Of course, I would like to brush up your minds with regard to some of the vital facts about Ethiopia. Uh, it is officially known as FDRE, Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Of course, as we all know that before its bifurcation from Eritrea, 
they had a seashore it is in, it was located in eritrea but now currently the country is known as one of the land locked country in the horn of africa of course as i rightly mentioned before it is one of the seat of it is a major you know this the the headquarters of africa union where in which you can find 54 number countries member countries the capital is located in addis ababa the capital city of ethiopia so in addition to that it, the country shares border with eritrea Djibouti, somalia kenya south sudan sudan and the like so the area i have already mentioned here you can just go through the area as well as the population of course when it comes to the population in africa it is the second most populated country in africa and the 12th most populous country in the world so Addis Ababa is the national capital and it has got 11 regional states of course the additional one, the new one earlier it was only 10 but recently before six months new regional, regional has, state has been you know the established in the country and over 80 ethnic groups of course there are multicultural society like india ethiopia has also multi-ethnic society by the way the ethnicity is uh, very uh, very much celebrated and appreciated throughout the country but still there are reservations when i say this on about ethnicity there are conflicts unrest throughout the country ethiopia is considered as the emerging power with regard to uh, its own production investment as well as especially foreign direct investments they could be able to mobilize foreign currency through investors especially even indian investors indonesians egyptians throughout the world they have been located here and the economic growth a very remarkable economic growth but poverty inequality unemployment still it is uh, you know threatening the country of course as a part of you if you see the per capita income you know they are lesser than 20 times an average average american or european human development index they are at the very lowest level poverty rates and human rights of course still there is a poor respect for human rights and high rates of poverty uh, agriculture is the backbone of the economy it is one of the largest sector where there are a lot of you know transformation is going on there are agro industrial parts has been established in the country throughout the country there are about five establishments in indian investors they also uh, has got uh, plots as well as you know sheds in the establishments the gdp of the country by the way nearly half of the gdp of the nation over 80 percentage you know they get from agriculture there are about currently the latest statistics about 39 public universities of which you know and then uh, in, which includes four institutes four leadership institutes which are located in different parts of the country again uh, which consumes 80 percent of the country's budget so friends imagine that how much percentage they are spending for education alone almost half of the gdp they are spending for education and that too there is we can call it a kind of movement mass movement with regard to education i will come to the later on and addition to that there are 82 private universities and the like so the mandate for this educational you know institutions when you see the educational institutions they have a great role they have been playing a great role in addressing the practical social problems of the society there are a number of problems people may face you know ethiopia is the only country which has no history of lockdown during covid 19 because the officials the authorities they they just you know announce that we cannot lock our country like other countries because street life statism and informal sectors these are the sectors they play a major role in the life of the people most of the breadwinning elements that are found in informal sectors not informal sector like other countries if they lock the you know the streets if they lock the road more people will be you know what you call will be suffering that's what the you know the perception of the country and the officials so then they said that we cannot lock our country so let them you know take care of with all the precautions of covid 19 protocols something like that then having said this i would like to brush up your mind with regard to some of the you know higher education institutions and their role in community engagement i'm not going to 
going to have a detailed discussion on this aspect because um, it's not my concern. And then the world is in a, as we all know that it is in a transformation as well as with a lot of you know, dramatical change, the transition from industry 4.0 to 5.0, and there are a number of technological advancements, even communities throughout the world, they have been and termed, they have been termed, they have been known as smart communities, smart cities, and there is an invent of artificial intelligence. Again, plus there are a lot of what they call science and technological innovations, which boosts societies and communities to cope up with all those changes, as well as there are resistance from the society, resistance from the community. In line with this one, in addition to this, rather I can say, there are physical challenges in of higher education institutions. If you take the countries like Ethiopia, before a month, the country has got a reservoir for running the whole country only for 15 days. So a country has supposed to have six months reserve money to run the nation. So fortunately, they are able to get aid from Balban, UNDP, and since they are being supported by these developed nations, they are a little bit, you know, surviving. And there is also cultural shifts in the society. You know, now uh, cultural, uh, you know, what a homogenization, cultural globalization, enculturation, acculturation, and these kind of shifts have been taking place in the society, which, you know, pays, which attracts the attention of the stakeholders to concentrate and to, you know, and to correct the events. So friends, you, as you know very well, as you all know very well, there is, you know, community engagement and the role of higher education in institutions, which is inseparable, which has got paramount importance for the public good. If you want to deliver service for the people, for effective and efficient service delivery, we need to have collaboration with the industry and institutions, especially higher learning institutions. That is the motto of the Ethiopian government. At this center, you know, engine community for mutual benefits. It is about win-win. They also get some support and institutions also learn. For example, conducting researchers, disciplinary researchers, thematic researchers, and providing training, supports, advice, and empowerment process, conducting camps. Likewise, they have taken a lot of, you know, strategies. I will come to that later on. And if you see the three-dimensional aspects of engaging community and university, the, the main objectives of to promote educational outcomes, teaching learning. My friends, as you all know that in India, we have two modes, regular mode and distance mode. But here in Ethiopia, they have got different modes. I will tell you later on, but I want to highlight some of the things. For example, the regular mode, evening mode, weekend mode, and then summer program. Summer program with sponsored students and the like. They have got a number of different you know, choices to choose. And that's why I told you, massification of education is undertaken in Ethiopian universities. And Community, when you care the community, caring the community, engaging the community, it's about targeting the poorest as well as needy people, those who are in need of assistance or support. So providing their providing them welfare benefits and support is another important you know, strategy. And economic outcomes, of course, uh, promoting small and micro as well as medium enterprises so that and there is a possibility to, to generate income. Uh, it is one of the very important you know, aspects which needs to promote with the aspect of developing a culture of saving. So a scholar like uh, John Maynard Kennis, he said that saving in developing countries is like you know backwardness. No, it has to be promoted. That's what most of the country uh, education institutes in Ethiopia, they have been trying to you know, promote this. And in addition to this, the overall objective of connecting community with higher education, the nexus are 
the linkage which helps to develop the nation and also it is the basic you know foundation for promoting social progress and the economic progress like education health infrastructure development and improving income access to income increasing the standard of living as well as having an innovative and creative policy measures as we all know that the country has a current agenda the development agenda is about a home grown agenda which helps to transform an economy from agriculture to industry so this is the main motto in addition the evergreen agenda for ethiopia is about poverty reduction as since from the recorded history it is evergreen agenda but it has uh, been treated differently but it is not you know reduced drastically as it has been done in asia and other part of the world so higher education institutions are uh, having a plus role in this regard to promote the emerging social practical demands of the people and to address them in a very proper way in line with this one the government of ethiopia ethiopia rather i can say the federal democratic republic of ethiopia had come up with an proclamation number 1152/2019 which identifies the greater role for engaging community and how to address the development needs of the community so it is about formulating or enacting different consultancy services or community services that shall cater the needs of the community especially the development needs or development aspirations of the development you know needs or demands of the community which is one of the major responsibility of higher any institution which is the very important proclamation which has been you know uh, enacted in this country of course the notion of engaging community is not new to ethiopian higher education institutions but of course it has been given clear focus i focus because the growth of institutions which started from after our independence 1950 very first university was established in ethiopia after you know 1950s i will come to the part later on it has recently received very high focus for example here in ethiopia they classify institutions as first generation second generation third generation and fourth generation there are universities like hawasa addis ababa and jimma bahirdar and the and the like universities they are known as first generation universities where they give much focus for research community services and teaching at higher level of masters and phd whereas if you look at other side like third generation as well as the fourth generation they give high concentration for promoting undergraduate programs this is what the you know, trend it has been developed it has been going on here so uh, there are a lot of scholars there are a lot of you know you know uh, different scholars they have come up with different variety of terms by uh, by they based on their own objectives of the institutions organizations and even individual basis program basis the term the, they just coin different terms which can describe engaging community activities now let us see what are the terms the terms which are related to community engagement and development friends you might have come across this you know very interesting terms service learning civic engagement community based research civic education community experiences community based learning democratic practice philanthropic education so service learning is an area where we promote more and more volunteers for example in this regard i would like to raise some of the examples what we have been doing in our university and other technological selected villages of our university uh, with our, our cloud of professor dr karunagan sir and other colleagues those who are working in uh, our university we have started you know communicating with schools i am very much de delighted to say that 
based on my own experience from gandhigram i am very much honored and then please to say that my own experience with regard to extension and going to villages i was instrumental in selecting the a rural school a remote school for doing community services so in that process we learned a lot of things in the community it is about we are chosen a school where which has no basic things no proper classrooms no boards in one chair three children they used to sit it is really you know very much you know terrifying uh, experience and there is no proper floor for the in the classrooms and the roof was not you know it is not properly fixed and there was no library but we in the community those who are working in avasa university we tried level, our level best to support the school in providing teaching aids as well as teaching learning materials like books for children and as a token of motivation we also conducted series of Uh, different you know awareness programs as well as we just provided some you know best performance some appreciation uh, certificate plus some awards some small gifts we have just done in this process we served as the volunteers that's what it's known as service learning civic engagement of course there are a number of agencies starting from individual level to international level like individuals household community community based organizations civil society organizations voluntary organizations evangelical organizations interest groups pressure groups again international agencies they have been playing a clear clear role for example there are advocacy organizations liberty institutions civil liberty civic liberty institutions they have been trying their role to promote the community by educating empowering eventually enlightening the masses of ethiopia for instance there are number of you know i can say more than 200 ngos have been located in one regional state where we are located it is known as sidama national regional state more than in 200 international agencies so their main role is to engage the community by promoting the basic amenities for the community then in addition to that they provide assistance legal aid services free legal aid services and also uh, promotion of uh, agricultural by the way uh, during my you know previous uh, points i just mentioned about agro industrial development there are a lot of you know growth of uh, demand for agricultural products and they are trying you know the avocado is a fruit which has been grown in, in and around the places of the places where i am living the industries they are giving you know they are providing different type of saplings to the people and they are growing and then they are started you know distributing this is one thing and then uh, civic engagement is also for different aspects they have been trying and another very important thing is about universities higher learning institutions uh, we ourselves we go to the community we observe the community we analyze the community we interact with the community and we get inferences from the community based on the inferences we develop strategies and findings and we used to disseminate through there are uh, different medias and we used to facilitate these things this is uh, called community based research and civic education it is about you know enlightening the mass enlightening the community about rules laws and regulations and then and dos and don'ts ethics ethics morals and the like community experiences of course there are a lot of experience we gain especially i would like to so tell you about uh, my own experience uh, along with my colleagues i went for evaluating a community development project it is for about installing a borewell installing a borewell in a for a community in that community the community had not been consulted for before the installation of borewells the implementation agency was an ngo they found that the area was starving uh, and people are not getting you know proper water for drink portable drinking water 
and they had no option to get the water they were borrowing they were just buying and then they were transporting the water from some five and a half kilometers from other place and the moment you go there nobody wants to use the bore water the bore well has been installed in five places of the village very big village and nobody wants to use the bore well and we were surprised why you had been suffering you had been not given with you had not been given with proper potable water and you are drinking a what you call dirty water from other place why you are not using this water since there is a fresh water is available it is very good in taste we as a evaluation committee we saw that it is very very you know sweet water and nobody wants to touch and later on it was inching my mind why they are not using and then uh, we ourselves we had a discussion with our group we asked the people we started going to the households and we started asking them and they told us that sir we don't want to drink our poor forest blood because this the place what has been chosen by the NGOs used to be the burial ground of my grandparents how can i drink my grandparents blood so friends see there you know belief system see the culture so culture matters while you engage a community so when we later on we realize that okay so this is your problem the this is the failureity of feasibility as well as need assessment so we gave our strong recommendation that feasibility or need assessment to be done in a proper way so that this kind of what you could problem you see um, about a million good the Ethiopian money has been spent for each you know bore well about four five hundred you know million five million good has been spent for that direction of that bore well so this is totally waste this kind of waste could have been avoided and then other very interesting experience based on our community learning I think our professor Pichai has worked in Tigray region uh, now there is no more Tigray they are fighting for separate nation that is another story in that area I happen to read a research report there was a health center the health center used to give service like delivering uh, gyne gynec service or delivery care services for that purpose they established a very good health center with the help of who and other you know ngos who have been working in the health area so very well furnished and then equipped with five doctors and 10 nurses and 25 beds in a rural area which covers around 25 villages it was one of the sophisticated well established hospital so the main motto of established health center is to provide service for the community so that they can avoid using traditional birth attendants and they can take the service from uh, what you call well trained professionals health professionals that was the motto then what had happened uh, when they started offering the service uh, about 10 days nobody no delivery nobody has come but after 20 days there were about five births place around 25 villages but nobody was ready to come to the health center again later on after a, some two months no one but in between there are about some 25 birth took place in that area so likewise you know women are giving delivery at their home they prefer rather uh, going to give delivery at the health center this had a question the evaluation team and then they started probing with the community so what was the learning it is about there is a system, I think uh, professors who are working in Ethiopia, they know very well. In Christianity, as well as in Muslim in, uh, community, there are only two religions that are here. Immediately after the birth of the baby, they used to conduct a ceremony. The next day, they used to conduct a ceremony. That ceremony, they invite all the uh, relatives and friends, and then we used to be part of some of the ceremonies, and they group some kind of courage and the like. And they used to distribute to the all the people. And then 
uh, when we asked the when they asked the woman they told them that the evaluation team they have report in the report they told them that they don't want to miss the ceremony if while going to the hospital if they go to the hospital they may miss the ceremony had it been there at their home they can have the ceremony comfortably this is was the reflections they just posited and then and the government institutions and the as well as ngos they got the lesson they had a stakeholder meeting and they had stakeholder mapping and then they want they involved all the committed stakeholders and they involved all the stakeholders those who are having potential and those who are having relevance and they had a meeting in that meeting they have decided to prepare a separate room for the ceremony it is about community based learning they learn from the community so culture culture is the way of life so i the way i told you these two examples because culture is the way of life so ethiopia is known for you know they don't even same is true in india so we are not you know throwing our culture we're still in the maintaining our culture in that respect you know we have learned from the community so something it goes against the interest of the culture it is not possible to bring development and growth to the people and then democratic practice like voting as well as what you call uh, electionary campaigning and the like is another way of engaging community of course it's very common there are systems like in ethiopia we must learn uh, different systems like next to the village level they have a system called goth goth means there are five members you know we being networked with one individual one individual has to communicate with five members and then these five members are responsible to communicate another you know five members and the like each one has to respond so one to five there is a concept called one to five has been in practice in democratic practice and again from the education of course there are a lot of evangelical institutions religious organizations volunteer organizations they have been you know uh, working for the betterment of the people including mothers of our own and catholic missionaries they have been working uh, throughout the country and then with this let me go to the next aspect the ethiopian higher education proclamation which emphasizes the need for community consultation so that's what i have just explained with different terms of different scholars of course the they develop multi sectoral stakeholder so there is a panel called multi sectoral stakeholder this panel is responsible for engaging the stakeholder to build common values and vision this is very important arrowing all the stakeholders is very difficult because each stakeholder has got their own preferences their own uh, inclinations their own what you call perceptions and their own involvement and then their own degree of engagement may vary but common values setting a common value that's the important framework and it also helps to establish institutional research and community engagement strategies it is through uh, establishing long term commitment from both sides so from the institutions as well as from the stakeholders you know it should be established for long tenure and then resource mobilization yeah it should be based on a representativeness of all the you know, stakeholders not only that you know it is based on not it is not based on coercion it should be based on volunteerism and uh, use techniques of culture culture appropriate culturally appropriate ones we must to select to engage all the stakeholders as well as uh, in the use of technology we must use the level of education and based on gender we are supposed to you know that when we involve in this work and the inclusion inclusion in ethiopia there so friends with this i'm just you know, going to wrap up uh, with some of my own observation on experience and with regard to experience with regard to ethiopia yeah earlier forms of engagement which was emanated during the time of emperor haile selassie 
he has started an university it is known as university college of addis ababa in the year 1950 of course emperor haile selassie is now the modernist he is responsible for the establishment of the education institutions including the first and foremost education institution which is called is well known to the world number one in africa it is addis ababa university one of the oldest university it was established in the year 1950 and emperor uh, haile selassie i have to say something about emperor haile selassie Yes, he has received a Hollywood degree from University of Kerala, and he got in what ship? About nine hundred school teachers, school teachers. So most of the school teachers, those who are working, those who are working with me in the universities, those who are studied with our Indian you know, expatriate school teachers, are teachers. Those who tell us that our teachers uh, used to be Indians, I studied mathematics, physics, English. They used to still some of them uh, for your own death. They still remember some of the names. Even we had our own uh, English professor who was working here in Ethiopia, Gandhi Club, a school teacher. So yes, there are a lot of you know experiences I can share. And in 1961, it was reconstructed as what do you call Addis Ababa University. In that university, the very first program they started as. adult education program this is the beginning of communities engagement in the context of ethiopia adult education program still they are doing this one and different ways so here i just want to show you the conceptual discourse on stakeholders so we call stakeholders as a person or group of people who have a interest in the success of an organization or an environment in which the organization operates So, friends, uh, in general, for conceptual clarity, what I have been in a meeting about stakeholders is all about those who are affected by the issue, the communities, those who are affected by the issue, or those activities strongly affect the issue. It may be public or private or voluntary sectors, and those who are having responsibility of processing information, resources, expertise. And which are very essential for and um, needed for strategy formation and implementation. So uh, this is a very basic criteria for stakeholders. So controlling relevant implementation and instruments is the main one of the very important. And ensuring distributive justice, equity, fairness, distributive justice is the crux goal of stakeholders. So the multiple stakeholders, and then. In order to ensure the balanced representation, the stakeholder, multi-stakeholders in a community engagement. So I'm just trying to you know summarize the stakeholders in the multi-stakeholders context based on my examples. What I have just said positive. There were funding agencies. There are still funding agencies, which is the base or foundation for most of the developmental activities are the endeavors of Ethiopian community and community-based organizations like. For example, there are a number of you know interest groups, advocacy organizations, voluntary organizations, you know, uh, evangelical institutions. They have been established, and local community leaders, especially customer leaders, you know, like uh, India, they do have traditional administrative sectors, traditional governance. In that, they have customer leaders. They give some places they give justice, even some places they do administration, and the like. They work with you know farmer institutions. And end users are target groups are beneficiaries. Again, development agents are agencies. There are a number of agencies they have been working, and implementing agencies. Of course, there are different type of paradigms has been emerged with regard to implementing different activities like public public partnerships, GOs, NGOs partnerships, and compulsory contracting out, tendering or re-tendering, and then. Mm, neighbors they play a major role as shareholders and community again especially the crux ones for as far as ethiopia is concerned when we talk about multi stakeholders it is mainly on fusion communities of course each area they are known for their own ethnic types 
if you go to South Omo, there is a place, most of them, they are known as indigenous groups. The place known as Jinka, they are well known for tribes. Yeah, still they practice tribal way of living. And then uh, interfaces and supporting groups, evangelical institutions, a lot of missionaries. Of course, you know, since I told you, the only two uh, religions are here in this country, one is Christianity and other one is, you know, Muslim. Missionaries so is very important. Of course, they are really, really, especially health, education, infrastructure. They are, you know, doing a wonderful work. And Jews, government organization, of course, uh, it is still lagging to some extent. Government organization, they are trying the level best. And civil society organization as well, they have been, you know, uh, working with the, uh, in line with different agencies. And especially the education institutions, like uh, learning institutions. By the way, uh, they also classify some of the institutions as research universities. Like our university is one of the research university where in which they provide different type of supports as well as the components to the community. And also potential opponents. Exactly. You may ask me a question. How come potential opponents are stakeholders? I purposely wrote this one. Why? Because they are the one they are shaping. They are just uh, making other stakeholders to involve properly. And criticisms posited by the potential opponents is very important for engaging and encouraging as well as and what you call enlightening the process of community development through uh, the com community engagement process. So potential opponents has also a clear role. And uh, with this, let me directly go to the past experience in Ethiopia. Uh, past experience, of course, during 1970s, throughout uh, the universities in Ethiopia, all the students, like uh, our Gandhi Gram experience of uh, going to village placement program, now it has been changed as values and social responsibilities, Yes, sir. And it is very compulsory in those days. But now the individual universities, they have been given autonomous status. They can decide their own you know, strategies. And then in addition to the evening and distance program, they give special focus for focusing on surrounding community with multiple stakeholders in the area of health. I have given you some examples. Industries, of course, industry, industrial parks. There are about nine industrial parks have been set in the country in which they are giving you know employment opportunities for poor especially poor youth graduated unemployed youth are getting an opportunity agriculture still you know it is the area there are commercialization is also taking place commercial agriculture and again they are in inviting investors in this arena with different stakeholders as well as and uh, crop innovations there are a lot of you know trends as well as Researches have been conducted in our university and other universities about crop innovation and then especially um, what you call this um, bioengineering and the like. Rural development, yeah, remarkable achievements has been taken place, especially rural areas with innovative adoption of different technologies. Water, of course, the country is blessed with different type of topographies, highland, lowland, and midland, of course, the terrains. But water in some area is a blessing, in other areas it is a curse, even the country. It is not uh, levelly uh, provided in some part of the country. As we know, if you go to the Samara, the extreme north, and uh, Samara and the like, they are, they are very well known for very hot. It's like our uh, summer, summer uh, hot season. It's about Agni, Agni in our summer. And then finance, I think they are also trying to mobilize. But still, the finance part is still weak. In most of the universities and they are struggling for this aspect that they have not yet mobilized and friends um, there are outstanding examples when we say community-based education program which was posited which was initiated which was pioneered by one of the well-known university uh, the first generation university which is known as jima university uh, in that university their motto is about we are in the community so that means we are already in the community. It's not we are with the community, we are for the community, we are uh, we want to help the community. No, we are in the community. This is really a big word, big motto. So this has emulated by many other universities to promote this motto. 
context of Ethiopia. And then most universities, they use this mode as one of the mantra for community service. And also, and of late, starting from 2013, if you are an academic staff, if you want to advance in your career, one of the very important criteria is about you must do community service. This is the obligatory you know, one which has been established by Addis Ababa University in the year 2013. Once it is established in Addis Ababa, one of the flagship university, then it has already been you know, spilled over throughout the country. So most university, they use this criteria. It is one of the criteria which is very, very obligatory for if you want to apply for your career advancement or promotion, they ask you different criteria, like for example, administration experience plus your uh, publications and your uh, what do you call your students evaluation. Of course, students evaluation are very important. In addition to that, they made community service. So we can visualize, we can understand how much they are very keen in giving attention for community and carrying the community and connecting the community with education institutions. So this is a very interesting one. And professional services to the community, it may be at local level or regional level, national level, which is the evidence of professional activity, which has been considered for the promotion of different staff members. So as according to my, you know, just uh, surfing on some of the higher education documents, higher education relevance and quality agency, they have just, you know, uh, come up with some of the, you know, what they call popular programs, which are increasing the risk of being discontinued and diluted. Still, they wanted to do different services, community services, but due to the, these reasons, it has been, you know, nine. one, it is about increasing the number of students every year, even if you go to some of the very large universities like ours, 40,000 students are studying, 40,000. And some third universities around 10,000. So high attrition rates of experience staff. So there is a lot of brain trends. If anyone, they get the job to move over to different part of the world, especially for developed countries, they try to you know, jump. They're trying to jump from this place. And then problem related to programming. Of course, they don't have any proper schedule to conduct and mismanagement of you know, funds, as well as shortage of transport facilities, lack of you know, paradigms or perks or allowance to promote these activities and limited resources. These are some of the bottlenecks which had hampered the, uh, the establishment of or undertaking different community engagement activities in the context of Ethiopia. And then now uh, it is my, the, the final part of my presentation. It is about new directives. So Ministry of Sciences and Higher Education, now it is known as Ministry of Higher Education. They just come up with different type of elements to ensure harmonized system. Harmonized system means it is not uh, varying across the country. They wanted to have a same kind of uh, system throughout the country. So this says uh, it has to be an umbrella. Under the umbrella, means of education is an umbrella under which there will be there are a lot of structural changes with strategy in the plans that helps to promote some of the core areas of community service such as training for the community consultancy for the betterment of the community outreach outreach or development services or project for the community other professional services so they want to ensure these are the core areas in which they want to arrow so friends if you could see the proportion it proposes to change the previous allocation of stop time. Earlier, the load was 70% teaching, 20% research. So they classify workload, so you like that. By the way, uh, for local stops per week, 12 credited hours is enough. They are based on a cash per credit system. 12 credit hours is compulsory for local stops. For expatriate staff or foreign staffs like me and uh, our friends, it is uh, obligated to take 18 hours minimum workload. So now they have shifted the teaching, 60% for teaching, 25% for research, and 15% for community service. This is the current scenario in which they have been, you know, highlighted with, uh, they, are, they are arrowing their focus and harmonizing the activities. 
This new directive demands establishment of a formal administrative structure that is very much known for the efficient and the effective execution of community service activity under one number law. It is under the minister, council minister uh, at the national level. So the council is responsible for ensuring research, technological transfer, linking university with industry and community service as well. This is the current you know, framework in which the community, the engaging different multi stakeholders are taking place with the university context. And then uh, when you come to the university, within the university, there are different you know, setups like a vice chancellor, default center rank. In Ethiopian universities, they have three types of you know, vice chancellor. One is for academic affairs, vice president. They call it as Chan B, Nam, B name as chancellor, vice chancellor. But here in the Ethiopian context, they use vice president. President is equal to chancellor, and vice president equal, uh, to some extent it is equal to vice chancellor. So they have three types of you know, vice presidents that are equal to the rank of vice chancellors. One is known as vice president for academic affairs, and other one is known for vice president for research and technological transfer, and other vice president for business and development. Even there are also other vice president. If any rises, they can just establish other vice president for alumni affairs and like. So this entire community service. Activities are comes under Vice President for Research and Technology Transfer. This community service team comprises of community service directorate. They help responsible in executing different activities. Of course, last time uh, myself and my colleague we submitted a proposal along with a master student. The community proposal, the directorate, directorate when they receive the community proposal, they insist to engage a student of masters or PhD. In order to you know undertake a community a proposal which goes with only teachers they don't give much weightage and a proposal which goes with inclusion of a student researcher that has a high weightage so we can also convert the research for student you know thesis purpose and the like then these services are being prioritized as we have seen it is based on the national demands and in this regard you know, higher education institutions, they also acknowledge the indigenous knowledge, of course. So linking local community with their expertise and addressing the problems are being given much very important, you know, uh, but they are, this has been, you know, what people criticized and there are a lot of, you know, uh, experience feedback has been taken place and based on the feedbacks, they started, you know, working out community-based Community oriented programs at Ethiopian universities, which gives much focus for very structured, resourceful, and it is aligned with national sectoral priorities like poverty reduction, ensuring human rights, and empowering the most and national priorities as well. And in addition to this, you know, there are a number of you know what you call uh, challenges and prospects which I would like to say, the current scenario, they have some, some of the challenges and prospects while engaging. You know, the universities, they are, they are not free from the challenges and prospects. By the way, these are the, some of the, this is my last slide of uh, my lecture. It is about future challenges and prospects in engaging multi stakeholders engagement. Number one is about, as the professor Raja said, he said about, uh, establishing social capital. Let me start from the bottom of this uh, small, you know, oversized diagram. Social capital. Of course, this is demonizing. In this current scenario, this is demonizing establishing social capital. But there are examples in this uh, society, Ethiopia. There are examples. They are well known for, you know, trades. Uh, there are communities, there are ethnic groups. They are they are being, you know, very closely connected and. Uh, this era of smart communities, global ex internet expansion, it is an eternal challenge. Of course, it is an opportunity. So this helps to engage and empower youth for social action or civic engagement. This is uh, another, though all the points, what I've just posited, both challenge as well as prospects. And monitoring and evaluation, of course, relevance, adequacy, 
accuracy can be tested through monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring is all about what is being done, whether it is done as per the plan or not. Whereas evaluation, what has been achieved. So in this regard, the multi-stakeholders has a clear role with their commitment and their own involvement which need to be facilitated and communicated. And it is also very important for you know, establishing consultation with different you know, stakeholders and involving community-based monitoring evaluation is the need of the hour. And establishing that one is not a simple task. Promoting research and development, still, you know, the, there are a lot of efforts have been taking place in the different universities with multiple stakeholders. Enabling, source, maintaining social uncertainty. Of course, this is uh, one of the very unforeseen scenario in which the universities are moving. Besides, you know, there are uh, inflation, almost 100 percentage. Next to Sri Lanka, I can say almost most of the commodities are increased in Ethiopia as well. And equilibrium with changes in ecology, of course, ensuring uh, biodiversity and then uh, what they call treating global warming and then conserving the environment, preserving the environment. It is also needed of the hour. Still, there are uh, lacunas out there. Still, there are possibilities. And green legacy. By the way, there is a current mo mode of the government through in universities. They started planting trees. I'm very much related to share with you that I had planted uh, in our university campus about all the Indian expatriates, we pl planted about 300 uh, saplings. So we asked the university, since we have been working here more than uh, a decade, almost all the expatriates, we requested the place for Indians in our university. We planted more than 300 saplings with the help of different stakeholders, we, uh, especially with SPS direction from our uh, Excellency uh, Ambassador Robert Sir from Indian Embassy. Uh, we just planted 300 uh, saplings. So to some extent, we are thankful. And changes in the lifestyle, of course, this is another very important saving. Saving is another challenging one. And rethinking the community, reshaping education and training, it is quite near of the work. So with this um, all, so I will kindly request all of you to be a effective community member, a member and enlightened yourself and enlightened those around you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. Wonderful opportunity. Um, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, dear participant and all other dignitaries, please feel free to contact uh, or interact with uh, Dr. Sivakumar sir for having any queries in relating to this topic. Yeah, uh, Sivakumar. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Yeah, you made it a day and it, it was so nice. You have explained everything very beautifully and very systematically. And it was so clear. And also we'll, we'll spend some time, uh, you know, many, uh, you know, friends and from different parts of the country have joined us. And if they would like to ask any questions or would like to add anything, we'll wait. Otherwise, we'll move on to the vote of thanks because the time is also already up because we plan to have it at two, four o'clock, but uh, still it is just five minutes ahead already there. Um, so let us wait for the participants to raise some of the questions or anything you'd like to say. Shall, I, shall we wait for them? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, yeah, sir. Thank, you, to, you, Thank you so much, sir. Uh, kindly, if you have anything to ask or to uh, you know, say something, you are most welcome. We will wait for the participants for a few minutes and please respond to this. Thank you. Uh, Professor Shivakumar, this is Venkat Ravi. Um, I would like to yes, sir, hear. Yes, uh, I would like to hear only one thing: that uh, uh, okay, you sir. must be having uh, uh, the local self-government uh, uh, in in Ethiopia. I, I I am sure. Okay, in some form or other, we have an panchayat raj system like that. There must be some kind of a local self-government uh, system. 
and uh, yes sir what is the kind of uh, kind of an uh, what do you call uh, a stand between uh, the uh, like universities and government setup and uh, these kind of an uh, self help uh, sorry uh, local self government when when we want to mobilize these kind of community mobilization so how it happens sir yes sir okay sir uh, very wonderful question sir of course i don't know our time uh, going to the paucity of time i just you know skip to merit uh, some of the aspect about linking uh, universities with government institution yeah in our school we known for uh, governance and development studies we have been giving training for local uh, presidents you know we have been conducting training for by the way sir here uh, the system is entirely different from our of us the local governments it has a system called oreda oreda means district but that's what else they are not empowered like us they don't have independent authority to decide budget and everything decided at the district headquarters and journal governments some states they have journal governments some states they don't have journal structure so the structure let me explain the structure first it starts from the federal structure by the way this uh, ethiopian system is called federalism ethiopian federalism of nation nationalities so they have two type of constitution one for the federal government and another one for state government under the state government they have got regional or sub region journal oreda oreda means district and then next to district there is no block directly table table means village so in this regard the oreda government or the district government they are having uh, an authority of deciding the budget so budget is decided at the regional level it has been dispersed so financial decentralization is not properly established and when we come to the linkage between universities and institutions we have a system called uh, technological villages we have in it, in our university where i have been working and other universities they select based on poverty and food insecurity so they select the universities based on the criteria poverty and food insecurity they choose some the very remote you know villages and which needs much care and attention from the universities this is the way we select and we go with customary institutions as well as formal institutions there is administration called kebale administration which is equivalent to our panchayat uh, institutions through which we mobilize we mobilize the institutions this is what we used to conduct uh, th thank you professor shiva kumar uh dear participants you, any, any, anybody anybody would like to interact with uh, the expert professor shiva kumar mm. it reminds me when it sounds as ss it reminds me my own teacher shiva subramanyam who taught us the development administration in gandhi gram rural institute probably shiva professor shiva may be doing it yeah i know him sir by name but uh, when i when i joined that he was no more i am sorry that you know, i didn't okay. get a, yes, an advice yes, from sir. him yes sir okay. yes sir yeah, yeah. and yes. may i request uh, uh any one of from the indian adolescent association would like to ask any questions or queries not queries but to add something more or to clarify okay so if if i think it, it means that you know the uh, you know the lecture delivered by uh, professor shivakumar was i think uh, more uh, clear and very um enthusiastic and uh, very encouraging and so uh, we will move on to um the next program that is uh, uh, dr ramesh you can invite dr kalpana kausik for proposing word of thanks thank you we are very much happy and also fortunate to have had a, a worthwhile lecture which is witnessing for a multidisciplinary personality and field level experience in community 
development with the support of stakeholders at various levels in Ethiopia. Thank you, Professor Sivakuma, for your wonderful thought. We are looking forward to have you once again with us in the near future. Dear participant, please download your e-certificate after giving your feedback on chat box. Now it, it is time to propose what of thanks. May I have Mrs. Kalpana Kausik, Director, Indian Adult Education Association, New Delhi. Now it, it is over to Mrs. Kalpana Kausik. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh. Am I audible? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Very yes, good. Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Go, sir. Thank you so much, sir. A uh, good third part of the day. I would like to express my gratitude to all esteemed delegates and participants of the international webinar for their presence and contribution to make this webinar a great success. It is such an honor for me to get the opportunity to thank you all the dignitaries on behalf of Indian Adult Education Association. I extend my gratitude to our honorable chief guest, Dr. C. Pechai, Professor and Head Department of Cooperation, Gandhigram Rural Institute, Gandhigram. Thank you for your brief but effective presidential address. You mentioned some steps for effective community stakeholder engagement strategies. Thank you for sharing your Indian cooperative system, uh, green and white revolution experiences, which are the best practical example of engaging multi-stakeholders in community development and Ethiopian experience as well. On water uses involve, involving multi-stakeholders from the community cooperative and Canadian government. Thank you, sir, for taking out vital time from your busy schedule to grace the event. As rural development projects are means by which government development institutions, universities, and non-governmental organizations deliver a range of services to elevate rural poverty and raise awareness. Organizations are increasingly being held accountable for the social and environmental impacts. Community stakeholders engagement is an important way for government, universities, NGOs, CSOs to meet those expectations. The implementation of rural development project is inherently complex, partly due to the need of need to satisfy multiple stakeholders. In light of this, the diversity of knowledge and values of rural community have to be taken into consideration. Thank you, Dr. S. Shivakumar, speaker of today's program and Associate Professor, School of Governance and Development Studies, Avasa, Ethiopia. Thank you, sir, for your practical examples and sharing personal and valuable... For your practical examples and sharing personal and valuable... Am I audible? Yes, it's no yes, problem. Slightly, uh, uh, no problem. It's, Thank you, sir, good. for sharing personal and valuable experiences of Ethiopia yes. as well as India. It will further help us to determine the effective strategies for engaging, enlightening, empowering multi-stakeholders in the community and defining roles in, the, in this development process. Thank you once again and thank you for reminding us the importance of 25th May, 20, uh, 25th May. Wish you all a very happy African Liberation Day. I would also like to thank Dr. L. Raja, President and the captain of the ship. Thank you, sir. Uh, for your welcome address and to look at the available best practices in stakeholder participation in community engagement. From get to know your community to make community engagement permanent by collaboration of different institutions and stakeholders. It is clear that reciprocal relationship between stakeholders increases their participation in rural development projects. <laughs> because they provide a platform for new relationship to be developed in addition to the existing one. And they learn to appreciate the legitimacy of each other's views. The webinar taught us that the collaboration of stakeholders is necessary for sustainability and the implementation of decisions to be addressed effectively. Further, a big thanks to Gandhigram Rural Institute, Tamil Nadu Open University, Dr. Venkata Ravi, Dr. Ramesh, Dr. Gyan Saranya, and the entire team behind the curtain for their efforts towards today's event. I mentioned my sincere sense of gratitude to all of them. I would also like to place my heartly thanks to all the participants. Have a great day ahead. Thank you very much. Over to you, Ramesh. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, 
Kalpana Kausik, it was so nice and excellent um, that you had really had given a very good uh, word of thanks. Mm -hmm. And I think from the economics side, somebody is going to trying to say something, and they, they their uh, you know mic is uh, on and off. I, I don't know if somebody is going to say something from the economics. Hello, from economics. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to inform uh, to all the participants that tomorrow. At ten thirty, we will have the next discussion, and uh, uh, so uh, please join us tomorrow. And also, uh, those who have already joined today and join us, and also you can invite other friends to join. And uh, again, on behalf of Gandhi Gram University, and on my own behalf, and the Department of Lifelong Learning, and also from the Tamil Nadu State Open University. And Delhi University jointly, we thank you, Dr. Sukumar, and we give you all round of the, you know, clap to you, and we thank wish you, you all the best, and many more success to come to you, and work hard and establish yourself as a very great person in the future, and take the legacy of Gandhi Gram wherever you go. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I would, I would like to say some few words. Thank you, Kalpana Hausik, ma'am, for your wonderful, you know, what of thanks. And, uh, and Venkat Ravi, sir, about, you know, the entire program. It was well organized. You know, I am very much delighted to be here with my, you know, uh, about a decade and old experience. Uh, it's a really uh, great uh, honor and privilege. And then it's my uh, happiness to share with all of you that. And with my own university, where I graduated, starting from a UG, PG, PhD, and uh, Professor Raja is to my our Sandisena teacher, and we had a lot of you know what do you call uh, experiences with Professor Raja sir, we, you know with different camps as well as he molded us in different mimes and dramas and the like. We uh, is unforgettable sir. Thank you for remembering all those sweet memories. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you one and all uh, for your extending cooperation and kind support to conduct this uh, lecture series so we will meet on uh, in i mean on tomorrow thank you so much to everyone thank you